Hello, my name is David Hill and I am a senior technical marketing architect working in VMware's Cloud Services business unit. Today we are going to look at VMware vCloud Air object storage powered by EMC. In this video we will take a brief look at why people are looking to use object storage, what the benefits are and then we will see a demo of the object storage platform. Let's begin. VMware vCloud Air object storage is a highly scalable, cost-effective and dependable storage solution that can easily scale up to petabytes and you only pay for the storage in use. Object storage is great for storing unstructured data like documents, images, video and music files and is greatly outpacing the growth of structured data. The VMware object storage solution is compatible with the Amazon S3 APIs including lifecycle management and versioning features to simplify and reduce management overhead. Data durability is 11 nines per object and data can be accessed via HTTP and HTTPS. The service is simple to use, easy to set up and is exceptionally durable and available with built-in redundancy that eliminates the need for data protection. The service supports global access use cases with easy access from any kind of device. With vCloud Air object storage powered by EMC, customers with data locality preferences will know exactly where their data is stored. Customers also have the ability to co-locate in the same data centers as the service or in some cases run compute on vCloud Air in the same data center to reduce network latency. The service supports very large objects of up to 20 terabytes and you have the ability to create up to a thousand buckets and unlimited objects per bucket. When looking at the use cases for object storage, I have found there to be three main use cases. These are backup and archiving, imaging and media and shared files. Let's focus on the backup use case. Object storage gives you the ability to store your backup images or files off-site at a very low cost. You can literally store any type of backup from virtual machine backup images through to WordPress backups in object storage. Since vCloud Air object storage has S3 compatible API support, there are many third-party plugins or appliances that can connect to the vCloud Air object storage. A number of vendors offer vSphere backup appliances that can leverage object storage so you can backup your vSphere virtual machines running in your on-premises data center and securely store these backup images off-site in the cloud. If you need to perform a restore, you can very easily download these images and restore the virtual machines back to your on-premises vSphere environment. Let's take a look at a demonstration of the vCloud Air object storage offering. So the first thing we're going to do in this demonstration is click on the object storage powered by EMC tile and this will actually give us access to the object storage platform and it will allow us to manage our files and objects from within the vCloud Air object storage. Once we're in the object storage platform the first thing we have to do is create a secret key and because this is the first time we've logged in the secret key is for our specific user that we've used to access vCloud Air. Once we have this secret key we must take a copy of it and keep it stored somewhere safe and secure because we have no way to actually access this secure key once it's been created. We use this secure key to access the object storage platform through the APIs. So we'll take a copy of this and we'll store it somewhere secure and then we'll simply click OK. Now the second thing we have to do is create a bucket. And the bucket is essentially where we're going to store all our files. The important thing to note is when you're creating a bucket name, this bucket is universal throughout the whole object storage offering. So it needs to be unique. So you'll notice in this error that actually this is telling us that it's not a unique bucket name. So we'll simply click OK and then we'll go back and we'll create a bucket with a unique name that hasn't been used before. Now that we're creating that bucket, we can go through and do a number of things. So the first thing we're going to do once this bucket's created is go into that bucket and create a new folder to allow us to 
store our files. So we'll click add folder and we'll give this folder a name. And much in the same way that you manage your, your file servers and your file hierarchies, this gives us the ability to create areas where we can actually store all our files and manage them. So now we're going to upload some files to the object storage environment. And by clicking the upload object button, we notice that we're given an error that says upload not enabled. Now this is a secure way to prevent anyone using the user interface to upload files. And it only allows upload and access to the files through the APIs. So what we want to do in this instance for this demonstration is use the user interface to actually upload our files. So we'll click OK, and then on the top right, we'll click the Enable Tech checkbox that will allow us to upload using the vCloud Air portal. We can now go back and click on the Upload Object button, and this will give us a user interface with a browser ability to access the files that we want to actually upload. So we'll pick a file, and we'll upload this file to the object storage environment. Now that that file's uploaded, one of the things that we can do is actually give public access to this file using a URL. So we're going to generate a pre-signed URL, and this allows users to access this file via the web browser or any command interface using a particular URL. We will also specify a particular date that this URL will expire. So once we progress past that date, this URL becomes no longer available for anyone to access the files. So we've clicked the Generate button, we've created a URL with a specific expiry date, and now we're going to actually use that URL to open that JPEG file that we uploaded in the web browser. So we'll simply copy and paste that into our web browser, and here we can see a photo of a bridge in Middlesbrough. So now we're going to go back to the vCloud Air platform and we're going to upload another file. But first what we want to do is actually enable versioning, which will protect our files in the event that we upload files or delete files and overwrite them. By enabling versioning, this protects all our files and keeps all the copies of the previous versions of files that we've uploaded. So it's a very safe and secure way to protect our files. We've enabled versioning by putting a tick in the checkbox for versioning, and we can now go and upload another file with the same file name. In the same way as we did previously, we click the upload object, and we'll upload a file with the same file name. Now that we've uploaded that file, we can go back to our web browser, and we can actually refresh that image and we should see an, an image of the Golden Gate Bridge. So we can see it's the same file name, but we've uploaded a new version of it, and we get a different image in our web browser. So what happens if we want to go back to a previous version? We realize we've overwritten that file, and we need to keep a copy of it. We want to go back to the previous copy. So we simply click on the version history for that particular file, and we can see here that we actually have two versions. We've got version 2, which is the current one, and then ver the previous version, which is the previous file that we uploaded. So we can simply delete the previous, the new file that we've uploaded, and then we can go back and we can refresh that image again, and we'll revert back to our previous image that we uploaded. And we can see the previous bridge that was uploaded. So the final piece of this demonstration is looking at how we create new users to access the files that we're uploading. So we do this by clicking on the Access Keys tab, and we click on the Add User button. We give them a name, and we enter a unique email address for this new user. Now, much in the same way that we did when we logged in as the original user, we create a new secret key for this user. Now, this is their secret key, so they can access these files through APIs and through third-party vendor tools. So we see here that the secret key will take a copy of this, and then we'll send that out to the user so they can access their files securely 
through the APIs. I hope this introductory video has given you a better understanding of the vCloud Air object storage offering. For further information on vCloud Air object storage and other vCloud Air offerings, please visit vcloud.vmware.com. Thank you for watching.